Hey everyone, this is Substitute Topher filling in today for the Topher, and today we are driving the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach 1. This is a car that I've been very excited to drive because I myself am a big fan of the Mustang Bullet, and in some ways, this car kind of replaces that. And it is finished in grabber yellow. If anything, this car really looks the part. It looks so proper, lots of nice Mustangy lines and features on this car that just make it kind of stand out from other Mustangs. Mach 1 badge here on the back, quad exhaust tips. But let's take this Mach 1 out on the road and see how it is to drive. So to get a couple things out of the way, 5 liter V8 carried over from the Bullet, which means it makes 480 horsepower. That is mated to our trusty 10-speed automatic here that we know and love. gear ratios are so close together it's just always in the power band so this Mach 1 is a bit of a mishmash uh, of parts from previous special edition Mustangs we've got the rear diffuser and exhaust tips from the current Shelby GT500 if this car would have been fitted with the manual transmission it would have been the six-speed Tremec carried over from the GT350 up front we have as I mentioned earlier the same 480 horsepower 5 liter V8 as we would have found in the 2019 Mustang Bullet and it sounds freaking awesome. All right, let's go ahead and stick it into sport mode and use our paddles here. Lock down into sixth gear. Tight turn in there. Paddles are pretty reactive. This Mustang interior has been pretty much the same, left untouched since 2015, but being that it is the nicest interior ever on a Mustang, I don't think that's a bad thing, but it will be certainly due for a refresh uh, pretty soon. Overall, you can sort of just think of this car as a more track-focused Mustang GT, which kind of follows in the lines of what the Mustang Bullet was. I don't want to say this replaced the Bullet, it almost sort of just squeezed in right next to it. There's a couple things that are a little bit different. Um, of course, Ford repeats these sort of special edition Mustangs over the years. For example, the Bullet, we had that in 2001, 2008, and then again in 2018, 2019, somewhere around there. The Mach 1, the last time we had one of these, was around, I want to say 2003, 2004. So it has been on a hiatus for a while. Happy to see that it's back and so track focused now. The last Mach 1, I wouldn't say was uh, necessarily a track focused car like this one is. Gotta love the sound of that 5 liter V8. And that 10 speed transmission is just crazy. The gear ratios are so close together, the car is just always in its power band. Absolutely incredible. As you can see, we've got this big digital display here that changes when we go into our different drive modes. For example, when you put it into track mode, we get a big big rev counter Ooh. get a big rev counter that goes all the way across and I think I just heard the exhaust get louder hold on oh yeah <laughs> that transmission shifts so fast, it is absolutely unreal that that is just a normal torque converter automatic. <laughs> Mustangs are really just something else. All right, we are in like a town now, so I should probably drag strip mode. Put it back into normal mode here. As we're driving through this historic town. Hello? Yep. Nothing to see here. Definitely not driving a grabber yellow, extremely loud V8 muscle car. Just trying to stay low key. Nobody that ever drives a Mach 1 is going to say that, but here I am today. As far as ride goes, it's about what I expected. 
It's a little bit firmer than a normal Mustang GT, but it's not something that's unlivable. These seats as well uh, are pulled from the GT Premium, so they are pretty comfortable, old fart approved. When your granddad gets his Mach 1 and lets it sit in a garage, at least he'll be comfortable when he takes it out to the Woodward Dream Cruise. Feels like a Mustang. Nothing really extravagant with this car. It doesn't feel insanely new. Um, it looks the part for sure. They've done all the right things with the exterior of this car. It looks so proper. But having driven pretty much every year of Mustang from 2015 and on, it feels just about like that. As far as interior build quality goes, everything seems fine. I am noticing a couple stray rattles there from the door panels. Uh, this car does have almost 6,000 miles on it, and who knows how it's lived for those 6,000 miles. Keep in mind, this is a press car, so I don't want to be super critical of interior rattles, but there are a couple that I'm hearing. Just sort of normal operation for a domestic car in this price range. Something really cool in the interior, though, is you do get a dash plaque with these that say Mach 1 and then your chassis number. This is car number 31, so it's a super early car pretty neat. It is kind of all over the road, and I don't know if that has to do with the tires that are on the car or just the way that it is, but I'm finding myself having to do a lot of steering to keep it in a straight line. Um, it's very dodgy. As you can see, I'm, I'm trying to drive it straight, but the, the car wants to do otherwise. I'm having to sort of, yep, you see that? I'm having to just hold on. We can also mess with our steering here. We can have normal steering, sport steering, or comfort steering. Uh, we'll go ahead and go for sport right now. Oh, that's not, that's sport here. Yeah, it's very, oh yeah. I am being thrown around a bit in here, as you can see. I'm gonna drop the windows for a second so you can hear this thing. So ridiculous. <laughs> it blows my mind that Ford is able to sell this thing and the GT500 uh, with exhaust systems that are this brutal. But we love them for it. This car gasses up your ego quite a bit, which could explain why lots of them end up backwards into trees and ditches, but we'll gloss over that part. A little bit of a rough one there, but it's okay. We all have our rough days. My hands are sweating. Okay, so the car will let you hit rev limiter, which is a good thing. I don't like when automatic transmissions shift for you. What if I want to hear the rev limiter? Well, your Mach 1 will let you do that. We have just found out. This car is really making me understand why people love Mustangs as much as they do. Because you have all that power, all that noise, all that style, but the car is still comfortable enough for you to drive every day and be obnoxious around city centers and, and, and whatnot. So then, is the Mach 1 worth its $52,000 base price and with any options, around $60,000 price tag? I'm not sure because the normal Mustang GT starts around about 38, 39,000 now I wanna say. And it's pretty much the same car. I mean, you've got 20 horsepower less. There's a couple interior bits and pieces and exterior, obviously, you know, bits and pieces that make this car look much, much better than the normal car, but is it worth $22,000? Not sure about that. Uh, of course, you can, you know, option up the, the normal base uh, Mustang GT as well. But this is uh, quite a pricey Mustang. And uh, from where I'm sitting, I don't know if it's worth it. The exhaust sounds great. It handles great. It's kind of all over the road if the road surface isn't absolutely perfect, so that's not great. The exterior looks awesome. I think that they've absolutely nailed it with the styling. 
but it is very expensive so you have to keep that in mind when you're looking at these you got to think is it worth it do I want to spend the extra 20 grand so I can have a Mach 1 badge and a little bit more power a little bit more handling capability but it's it's something that you got to expect usually special edition cars like this demand quite a higher premium so it's to be expected but just my two cents there I think if I were gonna get one of these I would opt uh, even though I love this 10 speed I would probably opt for the six speed manual just because if you're gonna go all out and get a Mach 1 you might as well have the full driver's experience and just get the six speed manual this 10 speed is great though you know I've been raving about it this whole time but I think I'd still get the manual just if I'm gonna have the extra handling the extra power give me the proper six speed manual from the GT350 I think that that would uh, be the cherry on top for this Mach 1 and maybe make it stand out a little bit more from other Mustangs and make it a little bit more special all right everyone well that's going to conclude our drive today of the Mustang Mach 1 thank you so much for watching I have to back in in front of people whilst under pressure Yes, backup camera aiding me nicely here. And that's parked. Alright everyone, well thank you so much for watching. This has been Substitute Topher filling in for the Topher today. We will see you in the next video.